Peterson family. Our dad, the three Peterson brothers, and our families farm together in central Kansas. Our family farm started in 1882 and has been raising cattle and crops ever since. Please subscribe to this channel and give us a like and a comment if you enjoy the video. So here we are at the feed yard. This is uh, Tiffany West, close to Marquette, Kansas. It's about 15 miles from us. This is their big pile of high moisture corn. Uh, we dump it there over the side and then they dump it into this roller mill, add some water to it and put it in that pile. Kendall brought another one of our trucks in and he's weighing in here. I'm about to weigh out after I dumped. Uh, people are probably wondering what is high moisture corn and why do we haul it to the feed lot or the feed yard? We feed some of our corn as silage and then we feed some of it as rolled dry corn out of the bin. Um, and then some of these uh, feed yards here that are bigger and that are fattening cattle, we're just backgrounding cattle so we're not fattening cattle. These bigger feed yards like to use high moisture corn. Um, because the livestock do better on it and uh, it's a little easier to, to put up and different things. There's a whole bunch of reasons uh, and there's a whole explanation behind it I'll put in the uh, caption of this video. But we have extra corn that we don't feed ourselves and we can either take it to town or we can um, haul it to a feed yard like this. Now the feed yard pays us a little bit of a premium compared to the grain elevator and then we also can start corn harvest a little earlier because the uh, moisture of the corn is a little higher we don't have to wait as long for it to dry down we can get started earlier now the back half of our corn that we combine will we will hold to the grain elevator in town we'll wait until it dries all the way down um, but here in kansas that's not going to be very long uh, just basically a week or two and we'll be harvesting dry corn as well sorry my windshields aren't cleaner but uh, here's some more of their cattle as we exit the feed yard here Really, this is just a small percentage of the cattle that you uh, can see in this video. The cattle go way back over the hill. Uh, pretty big feed yard here. I, I think it's over 10,000 head, but don't quote me on that. So those cattle are gonna be eating some of our corn throughout the, the winter.
dad just topped off this truck. It's an in-dump truck that's going to the feed yard for high moisture corn. Usually I kind of go around and check tires, but you would have to have a hammer or a tire gauge to hit, the, to hit these. I am not hitting that with my hand. <laughs> that would hurt to check the pressure. Okay, so I'm just driving down the field uh, towards the road now. Uh, we finally have the whole crew, a combine driver, a green car driver, and two truck drivers um, to go full speed at this. We've been just kind of piecing around and only hauling trucks. We had people and not having a green car driver really. Um, and now we're ready to go. So we'll see how fast we get this field knocked out now that we've got everybody uh, working on the same crew. I was at a summer forage field day through our extension uh, service through the K-State extension this morning. Um, when I got home after lunch there was plenty to do. Here's some drier stuff. was 27 percent and this load was uh 32 percent so i think they actually like it above 30 a little bit better and they are actually they're stopped they just stopped but they got a pretty good chunk of this field done really nice thing when i hopped in this truck was there was a cold water jug and i just found a snack on the floor so i'm gonna partake in that Uh, one thing that doesn't make in very many videos comparatively to how often we do it is just the morning chores there's 2700 in there I'm gonna add another 14 or so up to 4100 so the loading was oh there's Nathan the loading is done. So that's the same old, same old thing. But it's not very often you have your first calf of the fall. So, uh, first calf was born in that pen out there. So I got the tagging, uh, tag and tagger. We'll get that uh, hopefully done here. Okay, so this is just, this is pin six. We just added uh, pin five and pin eight B together, put them together and made pin six. Now I can feed on both sides of this alley. Okay, this will be the last pin to feed before the cow pen. Uh, this is pen nine. There she is, new baby. Rush out the womb. They're not thinking about being mamas quite yet. So I went out there, I found out it's uh, cow number 633. But I realized I did not bring a marker for these tags. So I'm going to have to go back to the office to get that before tagging that critter. But it's exciting to see new life on the um, farm here. And it's also uh, really fun because... Last year's fall calves sold for more than we've ever sold a load of feeder cattle for. So I'm really excited what this year's fall calf will bring. Um, we won't find out that for another year when they're, when they're grown. Going to catch some more cows today. Putting out some bait. Hope it works as well as the other group. Yeah, the other group went great. Already got a calf out here. Maybe 
didn't get them caught in time. That one was there two days Came ago. early. That's 6.01. We are out here uh, getting ready to catch some more cows, bring them home. We've already got one calf out here. This guy's a early bloomer. He was eight days early. So we're going to try to take the cows down to that corner of the pasture where we've got the, the catch panel set up. They, they're used to rotational grazing, so they'll follow me there. It's just a matter of whether they get suspicious around the gates. I'm going to have to come and get her. They're following. Oh. Let's save that for later. They can eat it whenever they want, as long as they come in those panels. <laughs> yeah, well, if they eat it all, then we won't have any left. here we're gonna go through this gate and all the cows should follow us in and now is probably when you better stop filming because yeah. filming cows is bad luck yeah it's true. filming cows always makes some new dumb things all right these are the troublemakers here we got all the rest of them these ones are the suspicious ones but it's gonna happen to well we caught some of them most of them a few of them got away. Come on, cows. Come on. There we go. Look at them behave on camera. You got a hole, you got a hole in the back of your shirt, dude. All right, Kendall's uh, releasing the cows into the pen here. Well, folks, could this be it? We shall see. Hard to tell if that's an opening in the storm and we're not going to get anything, or if it's just that heavy rain. I guess we'll find out. We need the rain. Going to take this grain cart back to the, the yard. Um, we're done with high moisture corn, so we'll wait for the rest of this to dry down, and we'll we'll pick it dry. Come on, you can do it, you can do it, got raindrops, here we go, I think it's happening y'all, there's kind of a rumble of thunder, I don't know if you guys can hear it, um, it's also, it's like 5 o'clock in the afternoon, um, but it's already kind of feeling dark. I'm really hoping we catch a little bit of this storm. I'm happy some places across Kansas have got rain. I've seen lots of Snapchats from friends, places who've gotten little bits of rain. Everyone's really thankful for whatever they can get. I'm hoping for a downpour while I'm trying to do chores is really what I'm hoping for. Look at it 
rolling across my field. What is going on? That's weird looking. Look at that. That is intense. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Look, we've got a uh, rain jacket for Brighton. It's only like the fourth rain of your life. <laughs> what do you think? It's a little wet, isn't it? We're sitting on the front porch here and it's, it's blowing it in a little bit. It's pretty windy. What do you think? It's exciting been since before we were shooting fireworks off we last saw one of these listen to this thunder I don't know if you guys can hear it it's just constant So our entire farm uh, ended up with two to three inches of rain uh, that night, which was a huge blessing, obviously. And and as if you've been following us, you know that that uh, our our crops were struggling with with the heat and lack of moisture. In this video, you saw that our corn was pretty decent. Uh, that was because we got that ten inches of rain um, back in the first week of June, before a lot of these fall crops were were planted. Some of the soybeans were definitely hurt beyond repair. Um, but most of them were saved by this rain. And then our Milo uh, still has great potential, which is which is why we plant Milo, late Milo, uh, here in central Kansas, is because it's pretty normal for us to have these, these dry spells of a month or two months of no rain. And Milo is one of our best crops to handle uh, that lack of rainfall. So sometimes you, you hear us on this page, you know, saying we're, we're so dry, and then we have... Um, decent crops still and that's because we plan uh, for it to be this dry. I'm going to show a couple maps here that kind of tell the story of this summer and the last year uh, where we've had a lack of rainfall here. Um, the first map is the recent storm that hit which you can see where that angled yellow and orange right in the middle of the state. It didn't hit uh, very many people. We were very lucky to be um, part of that rainfall. If you go 10 miles south of here they're dry if you go other directions, they're still dry. And so um, a lot of Kansas is still very dry and definitely have worse looking crops uh, than us. A lot of the state didn't get that 10 inches the first week of June. So um, we have definitely been dry and, and we've been telling you that we're dry, but we're not as dry as some places. The second map is um, the amount of days since our last half inch of rain. So we we are 50 days uh, removed from, from significant rainfall uh, up until this most recent storm that hit. So this two or three inches uh, was a big deal uh, for us. Now the third map is a departure from the annual rainfall uh, for Kansas. So we're, we're still nine inches behind um, what we average. So we are still dry. Um, and you can see around the state, there's a lot of places that are, are even drier than us. They have been drier than us and they you know, will continue to be until they get a lot of rain. And so um, Kansas is really struggling. There's a lot of people struggling worse than we are, and I just wanna make that clear. We don't wanna paint the picture that we're the driest in the whole state or in the whole country. We are, we are below average dry right now, but, but it's nothing that we don't expect. This happens almost every year where we go through a dry season, but that doesn't make it any easier for us to um, watch our crops suffer. It doesn't make it any, you know, it's not fun to watch that happen when you put in a bunch of work to plant a crop and you want it to succeed. And some years it does succeed. On the years where it doesn't succeed as much, you, you still struggle. So there's a lot of people who comment, um, oh, you guys should be should be happy because 
you know, at least you have a crop, even if it's only 60% of what you wanted. And it's like, you know, I agree with that. You can be thankful for what you have. Um, and, and, you know, compared to other people, you have it better, but it doesn't make it easy necessarily. I hope that makes sense. I'm sure you guys have noticed that, um, you know, we've been a little down at times this summer with, with the lack of rain. And I don't want it to seem like, like we have a victim mentality or that, that we're complaining about the lack of rainfall. It's just tough sometimes. I think what I've been trying to portray is, is the realness, the authenticity of what it's like to go through a dry spell. You, you're not happy all the time. It's, it's tough. And so that's part of what we want to do with our YouTube videos is, is show you guys the real story and give you guys some of our real emotions, not just the good stuff, but the, the hard stuff as well. So I'm going to close this video uh, by directing you guys to a Facebook post that we shared um, before it rained when we were really dealing with uh, the dry times and we were really discouraged and struggling. Um, I made a post that was meant to encourage other farmers as well as myself, um, just talking about how... Um, our faith has helped us through uh, some of these difficult times. So um, you can read that by going to um, Peterson Farm Bros Facebook and going back about a week uh, to that post. And I'll also include a link to it in the caption of this video. But uh, thanks for watching our vlog today and uh, comment with any questions or comments and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching everyone. Check out our music videos linked in the description. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, Snapchat, and explore our website www.petersonfarmbrothers.com. See you guys next time.